It's the Morning Mayhem Morning Show. We are here with the homie Shane Sparks in the building. Let's go. Let's what go. is going on, man? Let's go. What is Let's go. up? Shane Sparks, man, salute to you, salute yes, to you. Man. Good morning, fam. Good, Good morning. morning. What's sir? up with you? Good morning. Everything is amazing. I'm very, very happy to be here. I love Vegas. Never thought I would be in Vegas a couple years ago. I don't like to gamble. I don't like to do none of that stuff. Now I play blackjack every day. Nice, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Okay, it happens, it happens. Hey, we going. DJ Bad Girl. Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see Shout out to DJ Bad Girl. 22.3, right? Yes, sir. Yo, let's go. It's your let's boy Shane. We in Vegas. The He's hottest place in the world to be. And um, I just love it. It's very peaceful, man. And like all the stuff that's going on in the world, I swear to God, I got a piece of land where I live at with that's just like we were just talking about. It's just right. amazing that we just sit in the house and we go outside our front yard. There ain't no drama, no nothing. I, I don't like know that. nobody. <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Got to let out. Sweats and not, hey, didn't you? No, I don't get that. No more so, drama. You better <laughs> no believe drama. it. You so, better believe it. Man. I love it, man. I love it. I man, mean. salute to you, man. And Thank you. Amazing Super dance facts. skills. You're just, you're a pro, a professional, and just an <laughs> overall good dude. I've seen you on many interviews, and you've been in our studio at the other place before. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you're with Anna Storm, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Salute to Anna. Salute, salute to Anna Storm. What up, Anna? And I just wanted to start from the beginning a little bit. Um, what really inspired you to want to dance? And was there someone or anyone that inspired you to get into that? Or were you just always feeling that music young? Or how did that all start? Okay. I have so many little stories that I could tell, yeah. but I'm going to pick and choose the shortest one. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, um, this is one of the stories. I used to be in this group back in the day, but I was, I was you know, super young. I was probably like 10 or 12. And um, I remember us being in the house, dancing, getting ready for this show called the um, the Easter Ball. It was an event called the Easter Ball in Cincinnati where you have your three-piece suit. Y'all know what's up. Hey. Yes, sir. Best, yes, sir. The shirt, the pants. You put on jacket, the fly list. Every, you thought you was the Sunday's best on Easter. Yes, yeah, so those <laughs> slick shoes. Right. And I remember us practicing and dancing, and um, and I was like trying to like just get the, the stuff down. And I went to the club. I went to the event. It was at a church. And um, I remember seeing this girl, and I was like, wait, who is this? She had an umbrella. She was like my age, and I couldn't believe how good she was. I was like, that's what I want to do. So the next weekend, the movie Breaking came out. Ah, you already know. You already we know. We go see Breaking, and I swear, the only reason I know this is a fact because they told me this. He was like, Shane, you learned how to dance in one night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He said, I don't know what happened, because I remember I used to just do a bunch of footwork and just be jumping around, you know, like, I didn't know what I was doing. He said, you learned how to dance in one night. Because the guy, Poppin' Taco, from that movie, oh, yeah. when I saw his <laughs> face, like, I go off of energy. Okay. I don't care about a move. I don't care about that. I go off of energy. If that move make me feel good, then I love it. He came onto the scene, I'll never forget it, and looked at um, Boogaloo Shrimp, hey. and I was like, wait, what nice. is going on right now? I, just tell me if y'all remember this. They was at the beach, and... Uh, Special K was doing her little jazz stuff, flipping and stuff, and I was like, oh, that's cute, okay. And all of a sudden, this is the first time I saw the movie, Electro Rock walks into the scene yeah. with the jackets and say Electro Rock on the back. I'm like, what is happening right now? <laughs> and then he looks at him, and he just starts moving, and he does the most famous move when he takes a spit and throw it on the floor, and then he throws it to the sky. <laughs> so that was it. It was over. I mean, it was over. <laughs> it was just stuff in that movie that that man did that I saw, and it was bred it in my skin. Like, what do you call it in that movie Twilight when they put a, when they put a mark on you, st right. a stamp? I forget what they call it. And, 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 and oh, I forget, whatever. But that's what I know happened. what you're talking about. Though. I've, I've imprint, seen those movies. It was an imprint. And, dude, ever since then, I was street dancer, popper, dancer, whatever you want to call me. And then I just moved on up to meeting a boy named Chris Tyler, who was my dance partner, Keith Sperling, my dance partner, okay. and, for, and done a bunch of other people. And I evolved from that, just battling, battling, battling. We would literally go from every day from the week of school, like uh, Monday through Friday, practicing, Saturday night, battling that's that was my life for so many years and um it's just funny how i evolved into what i did because there was no way in the world i should have did what i did based on where i was from right because right. nobody else did it and i know dudes that were i think you god forgive me what i had that would destroy me 
Facts. You feel okay, me? Okay, right, right. And I remember looking at dudes, and I was like, oh, my God. Even today, when I see people performing, like, when I see dudes like, um, y'all know Fiction? That won America's Best Dance Crew. Um, so You Think You Could Dance a Couple of Times. Um, okay, he's from Vegas. Okay. And this dude is ridiculous, okay? But I, it's, like, crazy. Like, when I see dudes like him, I'm like, I'm glad I'm not coming up at this time. Because that would have been a problem. <laughs> gotcha. He would have been a problem. Gotcha. And he knows gotcha. it. And um and we and him were cool. We met and I'm gonna tell look, I'm gonna tell you the coldest story, coldest story, one of the coldest stories in the world. Okay, so you remember what I was telling you about the movie Breaking? Poppin' Taco is in that movie, Boogaloo Shrimp is in that movie. Okay. Boogaloo Shrimp, I'm working with these kids called the Ochoa Boys. They doing a video. They say, Shane, we need you to come down here and do a special appearance in this video. Fiction is one, so you think you could dance a couple of times. So he's okay. the king of dance right now. Everybody in the world knows him. Um, Boogaloo Shrimp, breaking. Everybody knows Boogaloo Shrimp. And then there's me coming from America's Best, America's Best Dance Crew. You guys serving all that stuff. In the same room at the same time, and they're videotaping us, and we're freestyling with each other. Years, there's people more. going to be like, so did you know Shane Sparks? Or did you know Fiction? Did you know Boogaloo Shrimp? And somebody's going to pull up that video. You know how, that, how dope that video is when they got Prince? Michael Jackson. How do you? How, that would never happen again. Even though they're all past, but that just stuff like that just don't happen. But that video is out there, so it's got me, Boogaloo Shrimp, and Fiction. Is that's gonna be one of those videos that's that dope. people are gonna look back on and be like, "That's yeah. all three of them right there." That's three different generations. Right. Like right. think about so, that, man. That's crazy. Right. That's nah. right you know what that I mean? That is super crazy, I'm man. I have stories like that all day long. That so. is bananas, man. Out of all the videos that you um, that you choreographed, which one was your favorite one, and why? Oh God, my I say my favorite one was Marcus Houston. Um Sex. Circle. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, you sex, know sex, what was, it is. sex was dope, but sex didn't really sex was more choreographed for the um the stage. When okay. he was doing his tour, yeah. I had his stage, had his wall, he came out, he went behind it, <laughs> took his clothes off, came back out. Like it was ridiculous. The choreography was sick. But but circle if you oh, ever get a chance, okay. watch okay. Circle, yes. Definitely. The Make sure y'all go check that out. Yeah, so that was one of my favorites. I got a quick that question awesome. for you. I got a quick question for you. What do you think of your homie Chris Brown skills? Can Chris Breezy really dance? Is he the king of dance? I think we should do a <laughs> Look, look. Y'all ain't said nothing but a word. I, I'm going to tell you. Look. I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Let's set that up. Hey, check it out. Check it out. Hey, okay, so check it out. Chris Brown, I remember this moment so clearly. I remember Chris Brown first was coming up, and I remember when uh, Omarion was going solo. Everybody was trying to say, who would win if Chris Brown and Omarion battled? Oh, shoot. Me, I was a Omarion fan, so it wasn't that I was biased. I just know that Omarion will destroy him. At that time. Okay. At okay. That time, okay. At that time. Remember, this was back in the day when Chris was just coming out. I had just did You Got Served with Amarion. Oh, right. Facts. Okay. So Facts. think about the energy. Yes, Amarion yes, was yes. the king at that time to me. Definitely. And every dancer that knew Amarion was like, there's not too many dudes that can mess with him. And he's just a, he's an artist. You now, always nice. Always yeah, nice. Always sick. Okay. <laughs> but then, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Chris just started like, you know, like, but you know how careers go up and down. Then Chris got to a point where I was like, Chris can dance. See, the thing is, I, I don't like to talk too much about different artists, but I'll say this because, you know, people expect to hear what I feel sometimes. Usher was never dope to me. Oh. Uh, where's the can, can we hear why? Because. We definitely I need think, Shane think, Sparks. Uh, no, and yeah. I'm not, not the Reasoning. Team. Listen. <laughs> listen. No, Usher, like, you I'm in like, town too, baby. Listen, I think this might be a challenge. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. Back, nah, I just facts, feel that facts. Usher was more of a studio dancer. He had the dopest choreographers and the oh. dopest dancers with gotcha. him. Gotcha. Just you got to always remember that I knew his choreographer and I knew his dancers and they were beasts. And if you got a dope choreographer and dope dancer, they will gotcha. make you look amazing. But as an individual, if you really watch Usher, if he wasn't moonwalking, he wasn't really doing nothing that made sense. But if you really watch Omari and you watch Chris, mm -hmm. they dance like a street dancer. Yes. They dance yes. like they're battling. I totally I, agree. I, I can't stop watching Chris. Even today when Chris going, nah, when he Chris. did that, do you remember the video that he did with um Drake? Yes. And Drake was, yes. Man, I That's love one that of my favorites. So one of my favorites. I love that video so much. And they didn't even really go in, but it's just 
Chris has got this vibe about him, dude. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and so, and me, like I said, I go off a vibe. Some people can do a bunch of dance moves all day long, and I'll be like, okay, cool. And somebody <laughs> can go out there and just groove, and I'll be like, look at the way she is moving. Right. Look at the way he right. is moving. Look at the intent behind it. You can't teach that. That's not coming right. from a class. That's coming from instinct. Yeah, that's and that's what gets me, and that's what makes me determine, that's what helps me determine if somebody's dope or not. I don't okay. care about the moves, because you go to a class and learn 88 counts and become a dancer these days. But to really be like somebody that you go out into a battle, a circle and battle and go four rounds and not repeat your moves and people still looking at you like you dope, right. you don't get that. You can't get that from a street, from a, um, a class dancer. They're only going to do what they're taught. That's a freestyle true. is going to go. Right. So, yeah. If this right. is your blood in their DNA, then you know you're gonna see that passion. Yeah. You're gonna see that in them to do it. But that's kind of what he's referring to. Um, as far as yeah, being man. a judge on So You Think You Can Dance, how did you like being a judge on that side? Because sometimes you have to give harsh criticism. Or obviously you were a super good dude on there. But how did that feel? <laughs> <Can> I, <laughs> judging I, others. I got this story dance. to tell y'all. It's gonna uh -oh. be so funny. I love it. To this day, uh, Nigel Lithgow hates me, <laughs> but in a brotherly way. <laughs> I can't even tell the story without, without, without uh -oh. laughing. Uh -oh. So we get on the stage, and this is a girl. She's out there. She's doing her thing, and she's in her mind. She's killing it. But they're telling me to send her home uh -huh. because she's not doing good. <laughs> I don't know why I did this to this moment. I don't know why I did it. So he says, Shane, what do you think about her? And we used to hold up this thing for people that are going to Vegas. <clears throat> and I held it up and I said, you're going home. <laughs> wow. Wow. I Nigel was sitting next to me and we saw me say, you're, I can see his attention. Look at me like, what the hell? And I said, home. He said, <laughs> and he just looked at me and died laughing. <laughs> and to this day, well, I ain't seen him in a long time, but he would tell that story. He'd be like, and when he said, you're going home, and I, he's like, I lost it. And I was like, it was just so no, funny. Was but funny. that show was amazing. Like, every second of that show, I would never forget the moment that I booked that show. I would never forget the moment that I sat on that stage for the first time. I never, I just... Was yeah, man, just want to know... What would any advice you would give to any of the up and coming or like young dancers or choreographers trying to get into this game and like what does it take? Because I know it takes a lot. It must you get a lot yeah. of no's. I know you get a lot of doors slammed in your face. So you know what kind of inspiration would you give you to them this to tell them to I, try to make it? It's so many things that I could tell the up and coming dancers, but I would like to talk to them from a personal point of view of where you need to be at mentally when you're trying to do what you're trying to do in anything, any aspect of this crazy world. Know who you are before you get to where you're trying to go. Because what happens is you be sidetracked by a lot of negative people who wanna be you, who wanna take what you have and wanna destroy you. And you won't really know that until you experience these people. And I said something on one of my podcasts. I said, when you're dealing with people, if you know where you wanna be, you'll know who's good for you and who's bad for you. You feel right, me? Right, right, right. when they start talking, you already know, like, this person isn't good for me. And I'm saying this because in the future, you you can only live in hindsight. And I'm trying to give you something foresight. I don't know <laughs> what that means. But well, I'm trying nah, to tell you I something now. Pay attention to the people that talk to you in a negative way who don't, who's not looking out for your best interest. If you really look at it and, and you analyze it and you pay attention, you'll know who to keep in your life. Cause there's only a handful of people that's going to be with you to the end and it's very small but a million are going to come you can't imagine right. what i've done how many people i've met i live in vegas now i'm by myself i mean you know what i mean i'm right. with my girl and i'm with uh, my boys you know stuff like that but at the end of the day all the people that i met were like oh my god you're the best yeah <laughs> yep. you know staying at my house paying their rent doing all this crazy stuff none nobody calls nobody checks in on me it's a couple people. I'm going to tell you this. And the fact that you asked me a question is so beautiful because I got a boy who's on here right now, Marvin Columbus. Love him to death. I've been knowing that he was the reason for me to come to L.A. Nice. He nice. was the first person. He wasn't the reason that I came. He was the first person that gave me.